Hello everybody, welcome back to another day. Today is going to be the unboxing of a Thrustmaster TPR pedals. I've been super excited about these. Pre-ordered them, now they're in. So today we're going to do an unboxing and a review. I haven't seen anything about these. I've seen everything online. They look phenomenal. They're kind of the mid-range before you get into full-on simulator replication. But there really wasn't a mid-range before. So this is filling that gap and I am so excited about them. I'm actually borrowing some pedals in my flight sim right now. So these are going to replace them, upgrade them, and we'll see how they are. So I haven't opened this or done anything else with it so far. So you guys will see this as I do. All right, so it has this boxing very similar to a lot of other guys. There's the manual. I cannot lift that all the way up there, so we gotta lift it from the floor. Got it. That is the styrofoam box. Nothing else in here, but we will leave that up there because it looks good. All right, I'm gonna open this sideways. There, there are some accessories. Oh no, that's your side plates. Oh no, that's not side plates. That is the rudder pedal itself. Looks like really high quality aluminum. Take these out real quick. They are aluminum. So we're gonna have to do some assembly to get this up and running. Ooh, it's big. Come out. All right, let's grab out our accessories. Standard USB cable. Looks like an A, it's one of the big types. Come on. All right. Wanna grab these first. These are your included set of tools. Comes with two Allen wrenches and two little tiny wrenches. Let's pull this off. There she is. We also want the second pedal. There's the second one. All right, onto the packaging. Where is up? <laughs> On the bottom. that around the base. Set her up here. Come on. All right. So here are pedals. So there is some assembly required. Um, we've got the dampers, we gotta screw those in there. They come with all the tools you need to set this up and get it going. So I'm gonna really quickly assemble this and we'll see you in just a second. Okay, so real quickly, I've got one of the pedals done. After some lesson learns, I'm gonna show you learned how, I'm gonna show you how to do the second set. So, pull these guys out of the package. Nice aluminum pedals. These are really good quality from what I've seen so far. So we need to use the smaller of the two wrenches. We need to loosen this top screw, or the top bolts, not counterclockwise. Then we need to turn so that the ball is pointed at 90 degrees out and then retighten that nut. So this is a locking nut, so it should keep it all locked nice and tight up and down. On this, you're going to remove the nut. Also gonna remove this little tiny washer. You push this through. You put your spacer on, or your washer. You put the nut on, and this is just gonna be finger tight. You want it decently tight so that when you let go, it doesn't just fall but you don't want it so tight that you can't really move it too easily. You then are going to take out these two screws. These are what's going to hold your brake to it. Okay. 
This comes with an alignment pin and two others, so you want to verify with your first side which holes you put it through. So I put it through the third hole because I'm going to be playing not quite laying down, but pretty good. If you want it very vertical, you can put it all the way down on the bottom. If you want it really horizontal, you're almost standing on it when you're on your desk. Then, well, with this underneath the desk, then you can put it the other way. Okay, so now that you have these screws on the back hand tightened, because you want to get both of them started, because if you put one in and you torque it way down, you might not be able to get the other one in and it might cross thread it. So now that they're hand tight, we're going to use the smaller of the Allen wrenches. Put it in there, get it snug, but not torqued down and tight. Then, only grabbing the short end, you're going to torque that down, not just torquing on it, but you're going to use this, put some good amount of torque on it, that'll keep it nice and snug. And all you're doing, putting a finger on it and torquing it with the finger. So, that's all you do in that respect. There are a lot of configurable options in this thing, but at the moment we're going to leave this as is, get everything plugged in, and go hook it up. So, we will see you, oh it just feels good, but we will see you over at the Simpit. Okay, so we've got it mounted up, and we're going to do one of the hardest things that I have, and we're going to fly some DCS World in a Spitfire. It's going to be great. Okay. Ooh, there. Controls are wrong. That's not my best takeoff. Wow, that's precise. So I'm giving it just minuscule inputs, because if I go completely off, we got a lot of left. And on the ball, we are tracking a lot left. So we got a lot of torque coming out of this airplane. This is a P-51. We're gonna come back around. It's gonna be a pretty quick flight. Trying to keep things coordinated. Do some quick flying around the airfield. Flaps out. Not too many though. All right. So on landing is really where this is gonna prove to be invaluable or make this really hard. So from what I've heard, they prefer to slip it all the way in. I haven't done a lot of tail dragger flying, but they prefer to slip it in just because it's so much easier to see the runway all the way in. So we're gonna descend a little bit. And we're gonna start dropping our speed, drop our altitude.
going to maintain about level with the horizon. We're going to try and go down about 500 feet a minute. Oof, she's twitchy today. There's the runway. And gears coming down. Oh. Gear coming down. Get ourselves lined up with the runway. Drop a little more speed. Get our flaps all the way out. slow, a little left, bouncing it down, I'm fully off, oh my goodness that makes it easy, whoa, let's give it just a little braking, so multitasking with this is incredibly easy. So I'm able to keep it straight and break. Whoa. I'm doing pretty much just full brakes. All right, so let's go flaps up one, two, three. I'm gonna do it again. See if that was just a fluke or if that was actually everything we wanted. So normally I get massive amounts of torque on this. And it's just hard to keep going straight. It was easy. Oh my goodness, these make this easy. Do another little go around here. But wow, this is easy. I can honestly say, I didn't think that that could make it quite so easy. Let's see, so we're a little uncoordinated. I'm gonna get that ball in the box. I'm giving just tiny little inputs. It's so easy. I mean, the precision on this set of pedals is just insane. Keeping that ball in the box is just easy. It's so weird. I'm used to this being ridiculously hard. All right, so we're gonna go flaps full, gear down, Gear's on its way. We are descending, although not very quickly, so we're gonna pull the power back. Start our descent. Give it a 30 degree left bank. Try and keep her about horizontal, or about level. About 30 degrees, and coming down. There's the runway. More throttle, a little bit better on the horizon. We're trying to maintain about 150 on the turn in. We're gonna try and land about 120. So we're a little high. We're gonna cut the power just a smidgen. Pull back on the stick. Watch our speed though. And use the rudder to correct. A little more throttle. Ooh, too much throttle. We want to be 120 over the horizon. So normally, I'm just kicking the rudders. I cannot get them smooth and nice and easy. But this is just golden. Now, I can't land a P-51 worth anything. 
but I can keep it straight. Give it just a smidgen of braking. As we get slower, we gotta get less and less on the braking. Oh, that's easy. Well, that's a review in itself. This is easy. I never thought this aircraft could be so easy. And it's just, this makes it gloriously easy. Just so simple to use. The inputs are very precise, very tactile. It's easy to control. It's easy to do partial inputs, full inputs. Exactly where you put these rudder pedals, that's exactly what you get. And that is phenomenal. I've never had them this precise. This is amazing. So that's a little quick ready pad. Here's another one. Let's see if we can't get some wag going. So we've got quite a ways. Uh, there's another P-51 taxiing in front of us. Let's hope he's not going this way. And he is. Uh, no he's not, he's going by. I don't know where he's going, but we can follow him. This is so much easier. So I used to have the thrust mat or the Cytec, the old pedals. And it's just, this is easy. I can turn on a dime. I can stop where I need to. Look up the canopy. Make sure there's nobody there. But doing this little walk, it's easy. are just going to park it at this next ramp. See if I can park it. Wow. Just wow. It was easy. Nice. So, that's pretty much self explanatory. The P fifty one is pretty finicky on takeoff. It's hard to control. It's hard to keep this going perfectly straight. And with these pedals, it's so easy. It's just using them is a dream. The braking is phenomenal. So I hope you guys liked this review, unboxing, and quick tryout of these pedals. If you did, definitely leave a like and subscribe. Come back for more of this cockpit video uh, or the cockpit build. I've got to build this f floor panel. I made a temporary thing just for the review, but we're going to make a full floor panel. We're going to mount these in. It's going to be great. You guys should definitely come back for it. But if you guys liked it, definitely let me know, and we will see you guys in the next video.